In the rapidly evolving uh, digital world, the need for delivering solutions quickly and reliably and with fewer resources is more pressing than ever. So this has given rise for the low code uh, revolution and WSO2 has been in the forefront from the beginning. So today I'm really excited to introduce some of the cool stuff that we have been working on uh, recent couple of months on low code uh, in, for enhancing the developer experience of our low code integration products. So before I jump into those, so let me quickly uh, explain why low code integration is so important in today's IT landscape. Um, let me start with a story. Uh, okay, so uh, Max is the owner of uh, Wheelmaster, uh, a shop that is uh, in a suburban community that sell uh, uh, goods and services related to vehicles. So he, he has a very good sale and uh, the business was operating very smoothly. And all of a sudden, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic came in. So due to the lockdowns and less number of people going out, so obviously his sales went down. So then, uh, so Max was discussing with his team what we should do for this. So they discussed and decided they need a different business model. So they decided that they should start something uh, some online business, right? So even though there, there's an urgency to go online, but they, they were not in a situation to invest heavily onto that. It was not affordable for them to uh, find a specialized developer or an or a organization that can handle that problem. And also during the pandemic time, it wasn't uh, that easy to find somebody who knows about this stuff. Uh, luckily, uh, Paul, who is a part-time worker in Wheelmaster, uh, was known for his skills on mobile application development. He was doing some uh, mobile application development as a hobby, right? So Max reached out to Paul and asked whether he can help with this. Even though Paul has some uh, experience in developing mobile applications, he hasn't done any uh, real integration solutions before. But he has heard about low-code platforms. So he decided, OK, uh, let me give a try and see whether we, we can do something about it. So within a couple of days, he could uh, build a system uh, that could integrate with their existing inventory system as well as integrating with social media platform so that they can push uh, updates about their products and promotional stuff onto these local, onto these promotional uh, social media platforms. So let's see how Paul did that. So I'm going to play a small video. Uh, okay. So, so Paul is explaining his integration problem using the using natural language. So he says, okay, he has a system that has some inventory data uh, in a database, and he want to expose that data as a API. So that's what he's saying in natural language. Okay, so once you click on generate, the tool will take care of generating the required integration configuration just in just a matter of seconds. Right, so it, okay, so then, so what he basically does is the generated configuration, he, he just added to the project. So this is how it looks like. So the tool is capable of generating the configuration by just by taking the integration problem from the natural language. So this is not a 
imaginary tool that we are showing here. This is what we offer in micro integrator using uh, the micro integrator co-pilot feature which we will be discussing later on. Okay, how about the deployment now? So the development is done, now we need to deploy this. For that, uh, Paul used Corio, so basically he used a, uh, use an internal development platform so that he don't need to worry about uh, maintaining and managing the deployment. So this, uh, this allows Wheelmaster to successfully navigate through the pandemic period and increase their revenue back again. Uh, so this story shows how low-code platforms can make an impact. So if we are to do this implementation from the scratch using code, it will take a lot of time. So by using low-code platform, even non-technical people can uh, quickly come up with something uh, that they can work with. So this is the advantage in low-code integration. So, uh, so basically, since that this cut down the cycles that you need to spend on doing, uh, doing the work, that will immensely cut down the cost as well. So the low-code tools will provide whatever the abstraction that you need to uh, you need to do the integrations. So that is the beauty of this. So having that, that background information in mind, so now let's see what WSO2 offers for the low-code integration. WSO2 Micro Integrator uh, is a low-code integration product that is uh, designed to be robust, powerful, and lightweight. Uh, the micro integrator is engineered in a way that it can handle uh, any complex integration scenario in a seamless manner. This robustness ensures that you can uh, build complex integration logic and uh, handle a large number of uh, requests without compromising the performance. And also the micro integrate, even though the micro integrator has a uh, simple design, it is powerful enough to handle any kind of complicated integration scenario. It can be service orchestration, it can be some kind of transformations, uh, data service integrations. So any kind of integrations can be done using this pr product. Lightweight is another key factor when it comes to microservices. So the, mic the micro integrator is designed in a way that it is, uh, it is lightweight. So the heavyweight solutions uh, that we have in the market doesn't suit the microservices architecture. So with these all uh, features, the micro integrator can be used to solve any kind of integration problems that we have today. Okay, moving on, so the, the micro integrator is originally designed for the microservices architecture. So, uh, but the micro integrator can be equally deployed in the enterprise service bus architecture as well. So basically it supports both type of uh, architectures. Even though it is originally meant to be used in microservices architecture, we realized that it can be easily support the enterprise service bus architecture as well. So recently we have the, we add the support for Corio. So basically uh, the, the configurations, the integrations that you are developing using micro integrator can be deployed seamlessly into the Corio and we call it as Corio for integration. So now let, Let's quickly look at how the evolution happens uh, in micro integrator. Okay, so let's see how the evolution of integration technology over the years and how WSO2 have provided solutions for different uh, kinds of uh, integration uh, requirement in the market. So 
uh, in very early days, people used to do integration in point-to-point -point manner. So basically, all the systems get integrated in a point-to-point -point manner. Uh, there's no, uh, no product that get involved to do the integration. So obviously, in that era, there's no product. So basically, it's just uh, integration between different systems. And then comes the service-oriented architecture and the ESB era. So at that time, uh, ESB was acting as the central hub, which interconnect all the systems and all the logic that you are uh, doing for build the integrations are happening at the ESP layer. So in WS2, we had WS2 Enterprise Service Bus, which is uh, the number one open source uh, enterprise service bus that is uh, out there in the market at that uh, era. So basically, uh, it is well known for its uh, high performance and the powerful engine. So after some time, we introduced another product called the uh, WS2 Enterprise Integrator. The Enterprise Integrator is combination of enterprise service bus capability and some other uh, functionality like data services, message brokering, complex event processing, likewise. So, and then later on, the microservices architecture came in. So then we, we thought of, okay, we should introduce a product to handle that as well. So then we introduced the WS2 micro integrator product. So the WS2 micro integrator is is a specifically designed for the microservices architecture initially. However, later on we realized that, okay, the micro integrator can be used in uh, the centralized architecture as well. So that is something we did later on. So we, we kept supporting both enterprise integrator and micro integrator for some time. And later we realized, okay, we don't need to uh, keep uh, the enterprise integrator because micro integrator itself is capable of supporting all the things that you used to do with enterprise service bus. And then the, the evolution of API led integration. So basically, uh, so there is a concept called the API led integration which came thereafter. So the in API led integration the micro integrator is getting seamlessly integrated with our API manager product. So we, we introduce some components that uh, seamlessly integrate these two product products together. So then uh, by combination of micro integrator and the API manager, uh, people can uh, come up with the API led integration strategy. Okay, next, the cloud base and the platformless era. So there we are now. So for cater that requirement, since the enterprises are moving towards cloud deployments, we make sure that micro integrator is capable of uh, providing configurations that can be deployed into this cloud environment. So basically we are, we are, we have introduced Corio for integration, for integration related stuff. And now micro integrator is seamlessly getting integrated with Corio. Okay, so what's next? So let's find out what we are going to do in 2024. So we have been putting a lot of focus on improving our runtime. So basically we, we, are, we have been putting a lot of focus on improving the stability of the runtime and robustness and the performance. But we haven't been putting a lot of focus on the developer experience. So the tool that we are using for developing integration configurations are the tool that we, are, we, we introduced, I think, a, a decade back. So it is a something very old and it, of course we improve the uh, capabilities, but we haven't done a significant innovation on that area. In 2024, we are shifting our strategy a bit. And now we are focusing on 
developer experience. So we are, uh, so if you are familiar with our products, you may know that this integration studio is the tool that we are using for developing integrations that is based on Eclipse RCP platform. So now we are introducing a new tool uh, for VS Code. So we are moving away from Eclipse uh, RCP place integration studio and embracing this new VS Code extension. So moving to VS Code uh, gives several advantages. Uh, so one of the advantages is that VS Code is very lightweight and it has a robust uh, ecosystem for extensions. So, uh, and also VS Code is known for its high performance. So basically there, there are no lags when you are uh, working with the editor. So you, you should be able to seamlessly create this integration without any lags. So the next thing is VS Code is, is keep getting improvements and there's a large community to support VS Code. So, uh, so these are the major advantages that we see in uh, moving to VS Code. And uh, Joe will going to talk about, about this stuff in, in detail in the next session. And uh, so uh, even though we are introducing VS Code tool, we will keep supporting existing integration studio as well because we can't drop it all of a sudden because majority of our customers are using that for in their day-to-day -day development. So we will be keep supporting, we will be, uh, if there are any issues, we will keep fixing them, but we won't be doing major investment on enhancing the look and feel of the integration studio. So the major enhancements will, we are putting onto the VS Code. So let's see uh, uh, how it looks like. So I'm, again, I'm going to play another clip. So this is the, uh, the overview page. So the welcome page there you can see, you can start with the uh, new project or you can uh, browse existing samples and templates. So there are a bunch of uh, samples and templates already available that you can pick and start from it. So those are categorized into uh, various categories. So we'll be keep adding these samples. So this is the samples that we are uh, already having in the developer preview of preview version. So once you select a sample, you can uh, open it up, download and open it up. So this is how the, the OOU page look like. So this will list down all the integration artifacts that you have in the configuration. So once you click on a API, you will get the, the service designer. And then once you go inside, this is the editor that you are working on. So, right, so the, so the experience is a bit different compared to the integration studio, if you are familiar with that. So, and once you click on plus button, you will get the palette with different set of uh, components, be what we call as mediators. These mediators are the components that you are that you need to do anything to a particular message. And also, uh, in the co connectors, you will see all the list of connectors that is already available in the connector store. Now you don't need to go to the st store separately and download stuff. All the stuff are listed here. Um, so you can you can just browse and add to the, your project. So, I'm, so here you are, we are showing how you can add a mediator. So once you, once you are done with the configurations, then you can uh, build and run this uh, inside this uh, VS Code extension itself. So this is how we do that. So this is still in developer preview state. So we will be going in product, uh, the GA within a month of time after this. So you can uh, try out this. It is available now in the marketplace. So yeah, so that's about the VS Code. And uh, last couple of months, we have, been, uh, we have been putting some focus effort on how we can use AI to enhance the developer experience. So we came up with a bunch of ideas how we can uh, 
improve the experience using AI. But unfortunately, we couldn't implement all the stuff that we uh, found out. However, we implemented this uh, microintegrator co-pilot. So here, using microintegrator co-pilot, we can uh, explain the integration problem using natural language, and it is capable of generating the integration configuration for you. So once the integration configuration is generated, you can still talk with the co-pilot and do the adjustments. So if you want to do any changes, you can do it uh, from the co-pilot. Right, so yeah, so those are the two major things that we are introducing uh, for microintegrator. And let's see what we are going to do in the future. So we, three, we see, okay, we, are, we, we have three different uh, categories that we have to work on. So that in terms of the developer experience, uh, we are working on AI-driven development. And also the, in terms of deployment, we are working on uh, tight integration with Corio. And also we are working on the runtime aspect as well. So in terms of uh, developer experience, our goal is to uh, get into a state where AI to do 80% of your work. So we are not there right now, but we are, we are getting into that stage. The, the microintegrator co-pilot, so we have tested the capability of co-pilot against our certification programs. Uh, the the co-pilot, successfully passed the certification with 80% marks. So that's a kind of a uh, uh, goal for us. So, so we are getting there, but we are not right there now. But we will be keep investing on this to see whether how we can uh, improve this. Uh, so basically, we are mainly targeting natural language. So uh, we, we, we are improving on. Uh, how integration can be explained in natural language and generate configuration. It doesn't need to be English. So we have tested out with other languages as well. So even uh, with other language, we, we could generate integration configuration successfully. And also, we, we want to expand these capabilities beyond the co-pilot. So basically, we, uh, we already have some uh, AI data mapping capability in Integration Studio, but it's kind of outdated. So now we are looking into getting a new data, mappy, data mapper in place for the VS Code extension, as well as introducing AI for that. So that is being under development. And also in terms of the observability too, we are working on uh, introducing AI for that. And also in terms of uh, the deployment, as I mentioned earlier, we are, we are tightening the cup, uh, coupling between Corio so in the future, more, we expect that most of our customers will go with Corio for integration, for the deployment, so that, so that they don't need to worry about the deployment. And uh, we, we feel our runtime is stable and matured, but there are some, th some improvements still we have to make on the runtime. So we are working on making the runtime ultra lightweight. It is lightweight now, but we, we have to do some more work to make it ultra lightweight. So we, have, we are planning to put some effort on that and also more connectors. So we have many connectors available in the connector store, but there are some missing connectors and we have to work on updating some of the connectors. Uh, so we'll be working on that as well. And another angle that we are looking at is the supportability. So we are putting some investment on uh, make the supportability of the product much easier. Say for example, when something is going wrong in the runtime. So we are working on a tool that automatically detects that something is going wrong and generating the required uh, dumps or logs or whatever the information that is required to troubleshoot the issue. So right now it's kind of, you know, when something is going wrong, we have to manually take the information. We have to manually capture the dump, manually capture the logs. But here we are working on a way that it, 
the, the, the runtime itself automatically detects there's something going wrong and capture all the required stuff that we can observe later. So that's been done. And also we are putting some effort on introducing self-healing capability for the runtime. If something is going wrong, how it can correct itself. So that is been, uh, that's some area that we are working on right now. So these are the things that we are working in the future, in the near term. So we have some more plan for the long term, but these are the uh, short term features that we are working on right now. Okay, so that brings to the end of